Hey, Ryan Miller here again. I've got a new tutorial for you showing you how to hook up a character using the CG Toolkit. Uh, this is a toolkit that I've put together that offers some very basic generic game functionality and will allow you to get up and running making a game a lot quicker than if you were writing everything from scratch. So you can see here I have an existing Unity project with a character in here. The character is all set up and has some, some walk and idle animations. Uh, I also have my repository here. Uh, this is the CG Toolkit. Repositories like this don't contain the actual Unity project. They're more of a toolkit that gets added onto a project. So when I clone this, I want to clone it directly into the Assets folder of my project. So when I go to Clone New, I want to navigate to the actual project I'm working on and throw this inside the folder. Remember, if I copy this just into 2D CG Toolkit, I'm going to get the problem where it's not actually recognized by my project. It needs to be inside the Assets folder in order to be recognized and imported into my game. So I'll click Clone. So again, cloning is a lot like downloading, except I'm downloading the entire project history. So you can see all my history of commit messages here. When I swap back into Unity, now that that's done, I should have a new folder in here. There's CG Toolkit, and here's all my scripts. So there's a lot of scripts in here. Um, if you expand them, you can see there's even more. Uh, these combine to give different functionality. Uh, we've got, you know, control buttons can be added to movement normal, can be added to mortality for the character to be damaged, care anim sync to hook up animations, so on and so forth. That can take a while to plug in and properly configure together, and that's why there's prefabs in here. So if I give myself a ground plane, uh, I usually like to use a cube for a ground plane, just because it has a bit of thickness and tends to handle collision much better. I can grab one of these prefabs. Let's do button controls. So that means I'll be using a, a keyboard or a gamepad for this one, as opposed to the touch controls, which I'd use a mouse for. I can now play this, and this prefab is ready to go right away. Just need to bring that camera away some more so I can actually see it. There you go, so you can see a little tiny ball there. Let's try to get a little bit closer on it. And when I press buttons on my keyboard, I can actually move it around. I can even jump. So a quick explanation of what's going on there. So player with button controls, if I look over to the inspector, we can see obviously it has a transform. Um, it's got a sphere primitive mesh filter and collider and renderer. So that's just the default sphere that we create from the uh, game object create other menu. And then the CG toolkit comes in. So we've got control buttons. This is a script that ferries input from the user onto the actual movement of the object. In the case of a, a non-player character or an enemy, we would replace this with an AI script that would programmatically press these buttons for us. I've also got a rigid body so that we can uh, interact with physics. Um, this is very important for jumping, but it's also great for collision detection. And movement normal. So movement normal is the actual movement of the character. How does the character get around? What speed do they move at? What speed do they jump at? Etc. So lots of parameters for you to change and go nuts with here. And then finally a mortality script, uh, which is a little bit optional at this stage of the project. But a mortality script just allows your character to have health, to be able to get stunned, to be able to die, to be able to take damage, etc. Okay, so quick review of that. I'm going to take the player with button controls prefab, which is already set up for me, drag it into my hierarchy, bringing it into my scene, make sure the position is set to 0, 0, 0. Uh, again, that's called zeroing out. It's got a ground plane, so it's not going to fall through the floor. Give a quick play just to make sure it can run around. It can. That's good. Um, I'm going to parent my character, think of that character as artwork, not as your character itself, but as just the artwork representing your player. Parenting that underneath the player button controls. Remember this player button controls object that we have has a scale of one by one by one. 
that means that this is one meter by one meter by one meter big. So while it may look like the sphere is really small, it's actually a character that's really big. So I'm gonna scale down a character to be about a meter tall. Um, a little bit too small if we're gonna get really technical about it, maybe this character would be two meters tall, but I'm gonna keep it about the same size to be contained mostly inside this sphere. Once that's in there, I don't really need to see the sphere anymore, so I can just turn off the sphere's mesh, mesh renderer. I also want to make sure I look at this character from the side, uh, making sure it's centered pretty much in every respect. That's a good center point here. Make sure you got pivot on, not center. So I'm happy with that. Let's try that. So what's happening here is my character is actually rotating to face the camera, so we can't see anything at all. So let's rotate it uh, 270, which is like negative 90. Uh, and they group itself to 90 degrees. This is kind of the, the side scroller setup here. Since the side scroller moves on the Z axis, we need the rotations to be a little bit different. So inside the cleric dude, he's 270. It's like negative 90 degrees, except not needing to go into negative values. And then you'll notice as I move, the rotation to either 90 or 270. So that's what we're going to want to be able to see the character properly. We can also go into the control buttons here and turn off the vertical axis. So the vertical axis is our up-down control. Uh, WS or up and down on the keyboard or up and down on a joystick. And that just stops us from being able to travel forwards and backwards in uh, X space, which we don't want. Great. So now we just need to hook up our animation. Um, to hook up our animation, you of course need to have an animator on your character artwork object. You need to have some animations that exist to work with. Uh, we also need to, on our player group, let's just rename that to player, uh, add a care anim sync object. So what this does is this stores a reference to the animator, which I can hook up right here, and that will actually give information to the animator of what it should play based on what's happening with the character. So that's not going to work right off the bat since nothing is actually hooked up in our animator. We need to set the parameters now and create transitions to the current states. So I'll pop over to the animator tab here. You should have some animations in here. If you don't, uh, pause the video and take a minute to make some. I'm going to use idle and walk right now. I'm not going to worry about attack today. We'll do that in a different video. So from any state, I'm going to make a transition to idle. And from any state, I'm going to make a transition to walk. And if you notice, I've got no parameters set up here. So without any parameters, we don't really have any means to talk to the animator to tell it what to play. And that's why I have this animator parameters help file for you here. So this is inside the character folder. Um, this is a list of all the parameters that the care anim sync script is looking for and will use for certain events. So I'm just going to add in a few. I'm going to add in horizontal speed. I'm going to add in vertical speed. And again, I'm just referencing this stuff over here. Add in a bool for grounded. Stunned, dead, uh, and that's probably enough for now. I think I can get away with not doing the other ones yet. So horizontal speed, vertical speed, these are all getting values from the script. Care Adam Sync is setting these values on the animator based on what's happening with the characters. We don't need to worry about these getting information. We've actually already hooked all that up. Now we just need to tell the animation to play based on that. So let's do idle first. Um, I don't want exit times. I don't want to have to wait for an animation to finish playing before it plays the idle animation. If I'm walking and I stop, it should begin immediately switching into the idle animation. It shouldn't wait for the current animation to finish. So I'll just minus that. And I'm going to add horizontal speed less than 0.1. So when the horizontal speed is just about zero, it's going to play the idle animation. Um, same thing for this, you can say when the vertical speed is less than 0.1 and when the vertical speed is greater than negative 0.1. Remember, we've got jumping and falling for this, whereas horizontal speed is an absolute value. Um, and when 
grounded equals true, when stunned equals false, and dead equals false. So if the character is not dead, not stunned, is grounded, not falling or jumping, and not moving forward to backwards, it's going to play the idle animation. Feels like a mouthful, but if we're thorough now, this will save us time having to go back later and configure everything on this idle animation transition. So now looking over to walk, likewise, um, if I'm playing idle currently and then I press the walk button, I don't want the idle animation to finish a loop before going into the walk animation. I want to get that animation right away. So I'm going to get rid of that exit time. I'm going to add horizontal speed greater than zero, um, vertical speed, likewise, less than 0.1, uh, and another vertical speed greater than negative 0.1. And the rest is going to look pretty similar. So if grounded is true, if stunned is false, and if dead is false. And again, not going to touch attack right now. So let's try that out now. I've got my animator, I've got my care anim sync, everything else should be set up properly. There we go. My transition kind of sucks. You can see it's trying to blend from the walk animation into the idle animation, and it's a little bit jittery. Uh, keeping in mind these aren't the best animations in the world, I can adjust how long they blend and try to reduce jitter by increasing the blend time or decreasing the blend time if you want it to pop into your new um, animation just by changing these sizes here. The animator is very, very nice because you can, unlike a lot of things that we edit in the inspector, you can make changes while the game is playing, you get a live update to your changes, and when we unclick play, it's not going to reset everything on you. It's going to actually save the changes for you. So that wraps up for this video. Um, idle and walk hooked up to the animator, and a lot of work already done for you for hooking up the rest of your animations eventually.